Greetings and welcome to episode 2 of the Math Olympiad lecture series for students taking part in the SMO senior section. So this is targeted at students who are 15 to 16 year old. In this video, I'll be going through 9 challenging Olympiad level trigo problems involving trigo identities. I will also cover the sum to product as well as the product to sum formulas with minimal derivation. First of all, some prerequisite knowledge of Trigo is needed for this video, so let me quickly recap what you should have already learned in additional math. So beyond the simple definition of the trigonometric ratios, you should also know the complementary angle formulas. From the four quadrants, you should know the relationship of each quadrant to the basic angle, whether it's in the second quadrant where sine is positive, the third quadrant where tangent is positive, or the fourth quadrant where cosine is positive. Lastly, you should also be familiar with the reciprocal trigonometric ratios like secant and cosecant. You should also know how to express tangent and cotangent as the ratio of sine and cosine. You will need to know the trigo ratios for the special angles of 30 degrees, 45 degrees and 60 degrees, the Pythagorean identities, the addition angle formulas, as well as the special case when A equals to B, we have our double angle formulas. Because we have so many identities, I will have the god of mischief who hides behind many identities, the great Loki himself, he will show up whenever I reference one of these identities. Let's begin with question 1. Evaluate arctangent of 1 plus arctangent of 2 plus arctangent of 3. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. Let's focus on the last two terms first. Arc 10 of 2 plus arc 10 of 3. Let's consider taking tangent of those two terms. Notice that if we apply the addition angle formula, we will get 2 plus 3 over 1 minus 2 times 3. And this gives us negative 1. And if we were to ask ourselves, tangent of what gives us negative 1? It has to be 135 degrees. So we still have the first term, but arc 10 of 1 is just 45 degrees. Adding it all together, we will get 180 degrees, which is our final answer. But is there another approach? Well, let's time travel back to the beginning and look at this again. Now, trigonometry and geometry are highly interlinked. Some geometrical problems become easier when we convert it into a trigo problem, and the opposite is true as well. So let's say I have three right-angled triangles. The first right-angled triangle is this red one that is one unit by one unit. The blue one has a base of one and a height of two, and the green one has a base of one and a height of three. This trigo problem becomes a geometrical problem of adding these three angles together. So here I have a grid. If I shift the blue triangle here, reflect the green triangle and shift it here, rotate a copy of the blue triangle and put it on top, notice that the gap in the middle is an isosceles right angle triangle. And that's where my red triangle goes. I can scale it and fit it in. And those three angles would add up to 180 degrees. So did you get the answer? Question 2. Which of the following is the largest? Pause the video here and give this question a good try. So the easiest one to eliminate is option E. Notice that we have a Pythagorean identity, therefore it gives us 1. And that is clearly less than tangent 50 in option A. So we can eliminate option E. Next, we compare the first three by sketching the first quadrant for the graphs for sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, we are interested at 50 degrees, that is just after the 45 degree mark. And at 45 degrees, uh, tangent is equal to 1. Sine and cosine are equal to each other at 1 over square root 2. 
So we can see that tangent 50 is larger than sine of 50, which is larger than cosine of 50. That makes option A bigger than option B and option C. So we eliminate those two. So we are just down to comparing option A versus option D. Now notice that sine of 50 is less than 1. And if you square a number between 0 and 1, it becomes smaller. So sine square of 50 is less than sine of 50. So option D is eliminated. And our final answer is option A. So did you get the same answer? Question 3. Suppose sine of 180 degrees plus x equals to negative 7 over 9, where x is between 450 and 540 degrees. Find the value of sine 2x. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. Now since x lies between 450 and 540 degrees, it must be in the second quadrant. So we need the third quadrant angle formula as well to simplify sine 180 plus x. That will give us sine x equals to 7 over 9. Now we can draw the second quadrant triangle, label the opposite side as 7, the hypotenuse as 9. Pythagoras theorem tells us that the adjacent side will be 9 square minus uh, 7 square and we square root that to get 4 root 2. But don't forget we're in the second quadrant, so the adjacent needs to be negative. So cosine of x will be equal to adjacent negative 4 root, uh, 4 root 2 over the hypotenuse 9. Next, we need the double angle formula. So sine 2x equals to 2 sine x cosine x. We input sine x to be 7 over 9, cosine x to be negative 4 root 2 over 9. And we'll get a final answer of negative 56 root 2 over 81. And that's our final answer. Question 4. Suppose tangent x equals to 5. Find the value of 6 plus sine 2x over 1 plus cos 2x. Pause the video here and give this a good try. So first, we're going to apply the double angle formulas. So sine 2x becomes 2 sine x cos x. And for cos 2x, we're going to choose the version that is 2 cos square x minus 1, so that the 1s will cancel away. And 6 divided by 2 cos square x gives us 3 secant square x. 2 sine x cos x divided by 2 cos square x gives us tangent x. Now, for the secant square x, we can apply the Pythagorean identity and convert it to tangent square x plus 1. And now that is totally in tangent, we can replace all the tangent x with 5 and evaluate that to get 83. And that is our final answer. Moving on to question 5. Something a little bit more challenging. Evaluate part A. Cos 20 cos 40 times cos 80. Part B sine 10 times sine 50 times sine 70 and part c tangent square 20 times tangent square 40 times tangent square 80. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. Now this clearly looks like a job for the double angle formula because we would like to double 20 to 40 and 40 to 80 except that we're only dealing with cosines here there are no sines so let's make them. So we can multiply by sine 20 in the numerator and divide by sine 20. We still need a 2, so let's multiply by a 2 in both the numerator and denominator. So 2 sine 20 cos 20 is going to give us sine 40 by the double angle formula. And that's nice. We have sine 40 cos 40 now. Uh, we'll just times 2 again to the numerator and denominator and we'll combine the numerator to form sine 80. And we still have a cos 80, so we'll times 2 again. And in the numerator, 2 sine 80 cos 80 is going to give us sine 160. And in the denominator, we have 8 sine 20. And what a coincidence. Sine of 160 is exactly sine 20 using the second quadrant formula. And the sine 20 is cancel away. We'll get 1 over 8. And that's our final answer. Now, part B is even easier. We'll use the complementary angle formula. Notice that sine 10 is the same as cosine 80. 
sine 50 is the same as cosine 40, and sine 70 is the same as cosine 20. And this becomes part A. So the answer is also 1 over 8. And so we're down to 5 part C. Now, if you think about it, tangent 20, tangent 40, tangent 80, isn't it just sine 20, sine 40, sine 80 divided by what we had in part A, cos 20, cos 40, cos 80? So we could just use part D divided by part A and square it, and that would be our answer for part C. So the hint for you is, let's evaluate sine 20, sine 40, sine 80. Why don't you pause the video here and give this a good try? As this question looks a lot like 5 part A, where we had cos 20, cos 40, and cos 80. And even Kit Loki here also feels that we should be using the double angle formula for sine. So let's go ahead, we multiply cos 20 to the numerator and denominator, we multiply another 2, and we can apply the double angle formula for sine. We'll get sine 40, but the sine 40 will multiply by another sine 40, so we get sine square 40 in the numerator. That's different from part A where we had sine 40 cos 40, so we're kind of stuck. We can't apply the double angle formula for sine again. So what do we do? Well, we have if we times 2 to the top and bottom, we can apply the cosine double angle formula. So 2 sine square a equals to 1 minus cos 2a. So 2 sine square 40 is equals to 1 minus cos 80. So let's make that substitution. We'll get 1 minus cos 80 times sine 80 over cos 4 cos 20. So again, we can multiply 2 to the numerator and denominator and expand this out. So you'll see you'll get 2 times sine 80 minus 2 times of cos 80 sine 80 and the double angle formula for sine will change that to sine 160 and sine 160 uh, using the second quadrant formula gives us sine 20. So it looks like we are making progress but again we are stuck because we have sine 80 degrees here. 80 degrees, what do we do with this? Well, we can use the addition angle formula so sine of a plus b equals to sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. So it takes a leap of faith here, but we're going to change sine 80 degrees into sine 60 plus 20. So if we expand it out, you'll now get 2 times of sine 60 cos 20 plus cos 60 sine 20 minus a sine 20 at the end, all over 8 cos 20. And the miracle here is that if you expand everything and simplify it, you'll see that the last two terms will give you one eighth of tangent 20 and they will cancel out. So our final answer is one quarter multiplied by sine 60, which is just root 3 over 2. So we'll get root 3 over 8 and that's the answer for part D. So going back to 5 part C, now that we know the answer to part D and part A, We'll just substitute it in, so we'll get root 3 over 1, whole thing squared. So the final answer for part C will be 3. So the final answer for all four parts is 1 over 8, 1 over 8, 3, and root 3 over 8. Did you get the answers? Question 6, coincidentally, is 2022's question 6 as well. So find the value of cos 10 plus cos 50 plus cos 70 plus cos 110 divided by cos 20 and take the whole thing to the power of 8. So pause the video here and give this question a good try. Let's go through the answer. So firstly, alligator Loki here suggests that we apply the second quadrant formula and convert cosine of 110 degrees to negative cosine 70 degrees. That cancels out the last two terms in the numerator. Now we are left with cos 10 plus cos 50 degrees. Now some of you might have applied the sum to product formulas, but that's not in the syllabus, so we're going to avoid that first, and we're going to use the addition angle formulas instead. In particular, we're using cos a plus minus b, which is equal to cos a cos b minus plus sine a sine b. Now the thing here is to choose what A and what B do we use? 
So it turns out that 10 is equal to 30 minus 20, and 50 is equal to 30 plus 20. So if we apply the cosine addition angle formulas, we're going to get this, cos 30 cos 20 plus sine 30 sine 20 plus cos 30 cos 20 minus sine 30 sine 20. So the sine 30 sine 20 terms will cancel out. What we're left with, we can see that cosine 20 is a common factor in both the numerators and the denominators, so we cancel that out. And we simplify it to get cos 2 cosine 30 degrees to the power of 8. So cosine 30 degrees is the same as square root 3 over 2, so the 2's cancel out. We'll get square root 3 to the power of 8, which is just 81. And that is our final answer. So let's rewind the clock a bit and generalize the method that we had used earlier to add cos 10 plus cos 50. What we've actually done is invented the sum to product formulas under exam conditions, which is fun but not exactly fast. So we need a shortcut to do this faster next time. In general, when we add cos p to cos q, instead of applying the addition angle formula to get cos a cos b minus sine a sine b so forth, and cancelling out the sine a sine b, we can straight away just get 2 cos a cos b. But what is a and what is b? So a is the mean of p and q, so we average p and q together to get a. And what is b? b is the difference from that mean. So if we're adding cos 10 to cos 50, we'll get 2 cosine of the average of 10 and 50, which is 30, and the difference from 30 to 10 and 50, which is 20. So 2 cos 30 cos 20. So this is quite a useful trick to have in your tool bag for Olympiads. Now, a fun exercise for the reader is to use the same trick that I've just shown you and apply the addition angle formula twice to derive the other three sum to product formulas. Do note that this only applies to the sum and difference of the same trigonometric ratio like sine plus sine, cosine minus cosine, or sine minus sine. Also, if you look at cos p plus cos q, the sum to product formula, and you let a equals to p plus q over 2 and b equals to p minus q over 2, you can convert this formula into another identity. So you will get cos a cos b equals to half bracket cos a plus b plus cos a minus b. And this is known as the product to sum formula and each of the sum to product formula has a corresponding product to sum formula. So there are four of them in total. And you can also give a step at trying to derive these four product to sum formulas. So do uh, pause the video here and give these derivations an attempt. Now to show you how useful some of these identities are, this is question 7 taken from SMO 2019, question 11. Find the value of 448 multiplied by sine 12, sine 39, sine 51 over sine 24. So pause the video here and give this question a good try. So we're going to zoom in on sine 39, sine 51 in the numerator. And old man Loki, with all his wisdom and knowing all his identities, suggests the use of the product to sum formulas. So once we apply it, we're going to get negative half times of cosine 39 plus 51, that's going to be 90 degrees, minus cosine of 51 minus 39 degrees, and that will give us 12 degrees. So we're going to get cosine 90 minus cosine 12, and cosine 90 is 0, so we can cancel that out. And when we simplify, we'll just get positive half cos 12. So we sub that into the red bracket there, we'll get 448 times sine 12 cos 12, over 2 sine 24. So if we multiply by 2 in the numerator and the denominator, our numerator becomes the double angle formula for sine. So we can simplify that and we'll get a sine 24 in the numerator that cancels out with the sine 24 in the denominator. So we'll just get 448 divided by 4, which is just 112, which gives us our final answer. Question 8. Find x where x lies between 0 degrees and 90 degrees inclusive, such that cosine x degrees equals to cosine 49 degrees plus cosine 71 degrees. 
pause the video here and give this question a good try. So if you still do not know your sum to product formulas, you can slowly expand and simplify. So cosine 49 becomes cosine 60 minus 11. Cosine 71 becomes cosine 60 plus 11. So you can expand and simplify that, but that is quite inefficient. Instead, I'll encourage you to be like President Loki. He can smugly apply his identities. Instead, you will get 2 cosine of the average, so 49 plus 71 over 2, and cosine of the difference from that average. So that will give you cosine 60 degrees, cosine 11 degrees. Cosine 60 degrees is half, so we can cancel out the 2 and the half. So x will be 11. And that's our final answer. So were you able to get it? So our last question for this video. Suppose sine 2x equals to 7 over 9. Find 108 times of sine x to the power of 6 plus cos x to the power of 6. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. So yes, we need our identities again, but this time we need our polynomial identity known as the sum of cubes. So in this case, a is going to be sine square x, b is going to be cos square x. So when we simplify x to the power of 6 plus cos x to the power of 6, we will get sine square x plus cos square x multiplied by sine to the power of 4x minus sine square x cos square x plus cos to the power of 4x. And using our uh, Pythagorean identity, we can cancel out sine square plus cos square x, which is just 1. Now we have a problem here. So this one we can simplify using a square minus ab plus b square is the same as a plus b whole thing squared minus 3ab. So we're going to get this sine square plus cos square whole thing squared minus 3 sine square cos square. So Again, using the Pythagorean identity, the sine square plus cos square is just 1. So we need to evaluate what is sine square cos square x. So this one, we'll use the double angle formula. We know that sine 2x equals to 7 over 9. So if we expand this using the double angle, we get 2 sine x cos x equals to 7 over 9. So sine x cos x is 7 over 18. So we can substitute that back inside, but square it. So we'll get uh, 7 over 18 squared. So in total, we know that sine x to the power of 6 plus cos x to the power of 6 equals to 1 minus 3 times of 7 over 18 squared. So this is uh, enough for us to get the answer, so which will be 108 times of that. And if you evaluate this, you'll just get 59 which is going to be our final answer. With that, we've come to the end of Lecture 2A. So Lecture 3A will be going into Olympiad problems involving the modulus function. But before that video drops, I will definitely be making the 2B video, which is another collection of trigonometric problems, but with a slightly different emphasis on trigonometric summations and inequalities. Uh, thank you for your kind attention and have a great day of learning.